Greetings, and welcome to our final video on lists. In the previous videos, we talked about how to create one and two dimensional lists, which are essentially tables. We then showed you how you can use data from a file to create your lists. So in this video, we're putting it all together. We're going to look at three different problems, and we're going to show you how to decide when you need a list and how to set up the problem so that you can easily solve it. As a quick reminder, we're working with the traffic data set that you can pull from Canvas. This data set only contains information about various intersections in Chicago and how many cars someone observed passing by during a set period of time. And we always give you a little legend here so you can interpret the data. So this should be review from the previous videos. So let's get started. We're going to use this. We're going to look at three different problems. All right, let's go. First problem, we're going to write an algorithm that outputs the address and street name of the street with the highest traffic count. So highest traffic count means the biggest value. Okay. So first thing you should always ask yourself, do you need a list? Did you need a list in order to find the biggest value? And the answer to that is no, right? We were able to do this back when we were doing loops. Uh, we were actually able to just look at every value and say, well, this is the biggest one, you know? Uh, the only real trick here is that in addition to keeping track of the biggest number, you also have to keep track of the address and street name so you can print it out. So no list is even required. Um, we can do this strictly just by having some variables that track what is the biggest uh, traffic count we've seen so far and what is the address and street name associated with it. So to set it up, what we would do is basically using our file IO skills, we would open the file, we would get all the contents as a string, we'd uh, split it. And so we get the individual lines and then we would loop through each line. So that stuff is so common. I just happen to have the code for it right here. And now if we set it up correctly, we have our current line representing one line of our file. And if you remember, we actually have to split it up. We have to use uh, the split function. So if I want to get the columns from there, what I would do is I'd take my current line and I'd split it by, that's why it's a comma separated file. So we're going to split by the comma. And when we do that, we end up with essentially this. Now we have each column individually and we can grab the ones that we need. So we need traffic count, street name and address. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab those. Traffic count equals um, columns four. Uh, street name equals columns, I think it's three. No, it's two. And then uh, address is columns one. And don't forget that traffic count is an integer, so we're going to want to cast it as an integer so that we can compare it. So with that, um, you pretty, pretty much have everything you need. Uh, it's pretty much a standard problem after that. Uh, remember that in order to find the biggest value, you'll need something before the loop. So you'll need something like a max um, traffic count. And you'd set it, if you're looking for a big number, you start off with something small. And then we'll keep track of the max street name and the max address. And these are blank because every time I find one that a, a traffic count that is bigger than this, I will replace this value and I will keep track of the street name and the address associated with it as well. There we go. So we've solved one. Let's do another one. In this problem, we are going to write an algorithm that outputs the number of roads whose traffic count is below the average. So. If we remember from our first video on lists, this is an example of a problem where we actually do need a list because first we have to look at every value and we need to keep track of what the average is. And then we have to go through every value one more time to see who's below. So now the question is, is it a one or a two dimensional list? Think about how, what type of data you need. Do, I don't need to know anything about the address, street name or sample date or number of vehicles by direction. I just need to know the traffic count. So this is a great example of a one dimensional list because my list only has to keep track of just this column. So let's go ahead and set up that problem. Steps are very, very similar. We're still going to get the contents as one big string and we're going to get each line using split. So I can once again, just start off with this. But now I need a list, right? Uh, we need to actually create our list. So we will do that here. Create an empty list to store the traffic count. And then I'll say list of traffic counts. And it's going to be equal to a blank list. And once I have that, then I still have to loop through each line, get each column. So we'll have to do the same thing. Columns equals 
uh, current line, split, and then we have to grab the information that we need, right? So we're going to grab the information we need, uh, traffic count, and that's equal to columns four, and then we're going to add it to our list, list of traffic counts, and we're going to do that with append. All right. Once we have this, it's just a basic, your standard list problem. It's very easy to get the, uh, the average, right? All I'd have to do is say it's the sum of list of traffic counts divided by the length of list of traffic counts, right? And then from there, we would loop one more time and figure out which values is smaller than the average, right? Last problem. Here, all we're going to do is write an algorithm that outputs the name of all roads whose traffic count is within 1,000 of the max. All right, so again, first we have to look at all the values to figure out what the max is. Then we have to go back through and figure out how many of them are within 1,000. And actually, we have, to, we have to output the name of all roads whose traffic count is within 1,000. So we definitely need a list because we have to look at the data twice. The question is, is it a one or two dimensional list? And to answer this, you just say, what information do I need? I need a uh, traffic count, and I also need the name of the road, which is here. So I need two things. As soon as you need more than one thing, you're constructing a table, so it's a two-dimensional list. So to get us started, the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and start with our base code, and then we're going to look at the, the algorithm again. Uh, we're just going to open the file. We're going to get each line using split. We've already done that. Now all we need to do is create a table. So I'm just going to create an empty table here. Creates the table. And here we'll just call it traffic table. And we'll start it off as being an empty list. At this point, we should probably think about how we're going to organize the table. Um, I am going to say that the first thing, the first column should be the traffic count. And then the next one should be the street name. So we need that. Uh, we're going to have to loop through each line, and we're going to have to get each of these columns. So I'm just going to go here, columns, and that's going to be equal to a current line. And I'm going to split it by the comma. And then we're going to get both the uh, traffic count, which is our columns at 4, and then the street name, which is our columns at 2. Hopefully you're seeing that there's a lot of repetition to these types of problems. Uh, that's just something that you, you'll get good at. You'll re recognize what's the same in every problem and what you need to change. At this point, we are going to, um, we have our columns. We're going to create the new row. So again, like I said, my new row is going to be equal to, um, I'm going to make a new list. And then I'm just going to say that the first thing is the traffic count. And then the next thing is the street name. And then I'm going to append that to my traffic table. So I should be able to append the new row, all right? And then we're adding it there. Um, once we have that, it's just a basic uh, 2D list problem. So for example, if I wanted to find uh, the maximum traffic count, what I would do is say uh, the row containing the max traffic count is going to be equal to the max of my traffic table. And that's why I decided to let the traffic count be first. If you remember from the previous videos, the max, when you give it a table, uh, will look at each row and return the row with the largest value in the first column, right? So in this case, it would be the max traffic count. And if I was to print that off right now, uh, and I was to run it right now, you would see it's this whole row. And then if I wanted to print out the actual uh, value, what I would do is go ahead and get the first value in that list. So now I have that right there. So again, um, we've set the problem up and then at this point there's nothing different than what you've been doing. It's just a matter of now uh, going through and looping one more time, looking at every row and figuring out who is within a thousand of the max and then printing off the corresponding street. So that's it. Hopefully by now you feel really confident with lists. Uh, we've shown you how to create one dimensional, two dimensional lists. We showed you how to read files, populate those lists, and how to analyze problems uh, that sometimes may or may not require a list. So um, lists sometimes get a reputation for being a really difficult concept. Hopefully we've kind of shown you that it's not as hard as it seems at first, and uh, it's just a matter of practice. So 
Stop watching, go, practice, do great things, and uh, let your instructor know, uh, let any of us know, if there's anything we can do to help. So, thanks for watching again. See you in class.